Okay, welcome back. Day two of uh, theCUBE here in Las Vegas. We're live. This is SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of Amazon Web Services reInvent. I'm John Furrier with uh, Dave Vellante, co-host um, of theCUBE. Uh, Dave, we got our first segment here. We're, we're, we're pleased to have Jerry Chen, who venture capitalist, uh, cloud guru, was at VMware. Uh, it's been in the enterprise for a while. Uh, guys, welcome, welcome to theCUBE. Day two kickoff here. Um, at uh, Amazon reInvent. Uh, Jerry, welcome back. Good to Thanks see you, Jerry. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, Cube alumni. But so how was Hong Kong? You're just back from uh, OpenStack. Uh, I think Hong Kong was great. My, my body and time clock someplace over Pacific, though, so I don't know if I'm jet lagged, but thank God in Vegas, I never need, need to leave the building, so I don't need to know what time zone <laughs> my, I'm actually in. So it's good to be here. So Amazon's pushing the cloud hard, obviously. They are the cloud. Uh, huge market share on infrastructure as a service. Um, Check the boxes there. They got like 36% probably our numbers. Ah, I think it's much higher than that, actually. You heard what Jassy was saying today. Well, I mean, 5X the next 14, it's got to be higher than 36%. I think it's closer to 70. Okay, but, anyway. but okay, that's infrastructure <laughs> as a service, but the actions, platform as a service, and SaaS. So yeah, if you can count Jerry, that. I got to get your take on sure. it because we're following OpenStack. You were just in Hong Kong. Um, you got Amazon Public Cloud, you got OpenStack coming up you know, as, as that horse, those are two horse race right now. Yeah, Cloud Stack's out there, but really it's OpenStack is like the enterprise hope. The, it's the great hope for the enterprise. With Amazon kind of rolling, rolling out massive services, what's your take on, on the two? And, and, and is it a two horse race? And what's the, what's, what's, the, what's the difference between the two? You know, I don't think it's a, it's a two horse race yet, but Amazon is quickly becoming the Microsoft monopoly of the public cloud at the rate they're going. Um, and and it, it, they have the size and scale that pretty soon it's going to be really hard to compete. And I think only Google and maybe Microsoft in the public cloud space can really compete. But if you take a step back and look at, you know, to your question, OpenStack versus Amazon, I was in Hong Kong last week at the OpenStack Design Summit, and OpenStack's philosophy is to want to be all things to all people, right? It's open source, multiple projects. Amazon's philosophy is they want to be one cloud to all people. So you saw their announcements today around enterprise use cases desktop use cases, startup use cases, media use cases. They want to be one cloud to all people. So it, it's not, uh, the race isn't over yet, but it's very different philosophies right now between the two different camps. Was there much talk about uh, uh, incorporating Amazon APIs into the whole OpenStack framework, you know, six months ago? You heard a lot about that. We had a crowd chat on that, sure. John. What was yeah. the, the buzz there? You know, I, I'll be honest, and to, to the point that you guys brought up earlier, the Amazon APIs almost are, um, become a, a, a lingual franca for infrastructure of a service. But quite frankly, debating whether or not they're the right APIs or not isn't, I think, where the action's at. I think the action's at to the point you made earlier around pass and other developer services. So the actual APIs, if you do the APIs right, should be pretty easy for developers to adopt. You just create really great developer services around it. Database services, storage services, security services, those are what developers really care about. So I feel like we have, you know, sometimes called Cloud Plus, you know, Infrastructure right. Service Plus, and you got SaaS minus, you know, with like what you have with Salesforce. Do you, do you feel like you, we really need that pass layer, or does that just sort of bifurcate into one of those two? There's, there's, a, there's a school of thought that says the world goes into two worlds. A long tail of SaaS apps, so there's an app for everything, in which case you have SaaS or SaaS minus, and then, you know, infrastructure, private cloud, for a bunch of legacy apps. There's no middle ground for pass. You know, I'm, I'm more towards the middle ground because in a world where we have multiple SaaS providers and multiple clouds, I believe you're going to have multiple SaaS and multiple clouds, you're going to need to integrate and stitch together a mashup of applications, right? You have Workday for HCM, Salesforce for um, CRM applications, your own custom website running on Amazon. There are three different clouds. ServiceNow. ServiceNow. How are you going to connect the data? How are you going to move data around? There's going to be um, a, a, at least some kind of pass layer, integration layer, or cloud layer that needs to help stitch together this multi-cloud world. So you like the pivotal play? A pivotal, I think. In I concept. Like, in, in concept, <laughs> right? I think Paul is in is, is <laughs> Paul is a visionary, and a bunch of my friends still work there. Their announcement yesterday was was I think a step in the right direction. That they're planting a flag, saying that. There has to be something beyond Amazon. There has to be a relevant private cloud initiative, be it um, VMware or OpenStack or someplace else, and let's create some services around it. And the angle they're taking around data and, and data services, I think is probably the right, the right bet, because all these new applications will need these data services to be relevant. We were talking about Pivotal yesterday, and one of the things that we were uh, 
critical on, and but also hopeful, as you pointed out, it's early, right? So to sure. give Pivotal a mulligan or a pass, if you will, is it's early. And it's really a, a new company, if you think about it, 1,600 employees, but new. But it's window dressing announcement, it really wasn't really, I mean, so the same logos, I mean, come on. They, it, they're trying to overhype, and that's, that was, that's what people are talking about, saying, hey, guys, just be honest and say, we're, we're working as fast as right, we can. Right. Um, because Amazon is not going to break the enterprise right away. I mean, they, they also have a, a longer road. They're going hard at the enterprise. Um, so they are going after IBM. We must saw in the keynote, they called out IBM specifically around some of the advertising around the show. Yep. So Amazon is clearly trying to knock on the door of the enterprise. Um, so the question we are asking and talking about is, how much time is it till they proliferate the enterprise? I mean, they're in there now, toe in the water, little beachhead, still not enterprise ready in the yeah. sense of the SLAs yeah. and the demands. Or does it matter? And so what's your take? How much time uh, is really uh, on the radar for Amazon? When will the clock be expiring for the IBMs, HPs, huh. Pivotals, in terms of retooling? So I think the evolution around um, enterprise public cloud like Amazon would take um, three potential paths. So path one around Amazon. Amazon invests enough engineering and product talent to make their cloud enterprise friendly. Privacy, security, reliability. And they're, they're hiring a bunch of folks, a bunch of folks from my old place, VMware, trying to do that. That's path one. Path two is you see a category of startups out there trying to make Amazon more cloud and enterprise friendly. Security, privacy, reliability, right? So that's path two. And as a Greylock venture capitalist, we're investing in a bunch of companies trying to make that happen. Or path three is developers out there um, engineer around the weaknesses of Amazon. So they know Amazon is enterprise friendly, they know en en Amazon's got a bunch of weakness around security and privacy, and they just write their application around those weaknesses. So I think those are the three evolutionary path paths, I think it's a race to see who wins, right? One, two, or three. Yeah, there's no doubt that uh, Amazon's forcing the hand of the big guys, and he's seeing that clearly. Uh, we have a, qu a question on our CrowdChat. Go to crowdchat.net slash reinvent. We've got a live, uh, live crowd-sourced thought leader chat there, all goes to Twitter and LinkedIn, depends on where you sign in. Um, but the question, uh, Jerry, to you is, how are cloud providers catering to provide low latency access to developing markets like India, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, et cetera, you know, given that the hurricanes just destroyed all the yeah. infrastructure, considering there is huge potential explosive internet growth. So given that those new emerging markets are essentially refreshing their infrastructure, um, what is the, the cloud provider's take on that? Do you, do you work in that area? What's your, do you have any opinion on what's going on in those areas? Sure, I mean, I think that the world is looking at um, two or three different clouds. You say there's a US dominated cloud, maybe a, a China dominated cloud, and the rest of the world, right? Generally, a lot of analysts kind of segment the world in, in three major buckets. When you think about um, uh, developing markets or other geographies like um, Asia, South East Asia, or South America, uh, huge markets, a lot of developers, a lot of applications. It's the reason why I think there's only a handful of providers that can have the scope and the reach to reach globally. I think Equinix, Rackspace, um, Google, Microsoft are all global footprint players. Everyone else, I think, you're going to look at a, a federation of multiple players. So every region has um, a, a local telco or cloud provider. It could be like an NTT or Rakuten in Japan. It could be a Singtel in Singapore and Southeast Asia. So I think you're going to see um, a global brand around like Amazon or, or VMware, and VMware trying to franchise their own cloud, or Microsoft, and then I would see partnerships working between the different geographies. And maybe OpenStack is that partnership. Maybe Amazon API is the way different clouds communicate. It, it it's, remains to be seen what that um, interface between the different geos look like in the future. And what do you see as IBM's role? I mean, first of all, do they have the global scale? Sure. Are you sort of purposefully leaving them out or just forget about them and just don't feel like they can compete on that global scale? And what do you see as their role in OpenStack? So, a um, bunch of questions there. IBM uh, didn't mean to leave them out. They're definitely relevant, especially for the large enterprises. So I think you're seeing enterprise adoption come from um, large startups or small startups growing up in the cloud, as well as large enterprises that are looking to modernize their applications, and I think IBM has a great role to play from kind of that top-down approach. I think IBM, between a combination of A, soft layers, which is their, their acquired cloud provider, combined with their global services and their consulting business, will uh, be probably relevant to large enterprises, in my mind. Okay. So talk about the, uh, the um, Amazon Enterprise March here. Obviously they're talking about cloud trails, which is yep. kind of like a, a monitoring service, compliance oriented, and obviously VDI. So 
<laughs> you, you've been close to the VDI movement. So that's, those are... I started the VDI movement. <laughs> started the VDI movement. So you know, being there, what is your take on that? Because that's very enterprisey, and that's sure. good, good for business. Um, what's, their, what's their chances there? Well, I think, um, so first on the VDI market, we started that at VMware in 05, 06, when we coined the term VDI. And um, I, I think it's, it's a great service for large enterprises that need secure managed desktops. I think uh, I would love to see a VDI service from VMware and Amazon five, six, seven years ago, because now VDI, I think, is part of a larger solution. It's, it's, it's significant, but not enough, right? Because now enterprises care about their managed desktops like VDI, but my iPad devices, iOS devices, Android devices, they really want kind of a holistically managed desktop or workspace environment. So if I were Amazon, I would expand beyond Windows into other you know, operating systems to manage like Android and iOS, but that's what they're serious about, you know, managing enterprise workspaces. Do they have, do they have an advantage in your, in, in your opinion, despite the fact that they're so late to market, do they have an advantage in that, and I mean, in essence, they are starting around mobile developers, aren't they? Whereas, when you started it, that yeah, wasn't, it was, a, it was that wasn't a consideration, Correct. right? And Citrix sort of found its way there, right? But I think between um, Amazon and I think Google's in a great position because they own so much of the Android yeah. stack, right? If they want to create an enterprise-friendly, managed um, Android environment for Chromebooks, um, Android devices, they can start creating a bunch of great developer services. It's like, imagine Google Drive, but secured on, on kind of a Google Cloud or something like that. That could be pretty compelling. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're going there. I think Dropbox has a great opportunity to kind of be that back-end platform, obviously a great lock investment, but Dropbox has that huge opportunity to be that kind of managed secure service across mobile devices and desktop devices. Because all of a sudden, the one overarching um, fact you have between Windows, iOS, and Android is their data, and Dropbox is on all three platforms. Jerry, we got to get rolling, and we got our next guest coming. But I want to ask you, Ashley, uh, talk about what you're investing in at Greylock. Greylock, Tier One VC. You guys have done amazing deals. I mean, just recently in the past decade, Greylock has emerged from just a Tier One VC to a, a mega success. Um, good investments, and if you're on the enterprise team there, yep. also the consumer side's kick kick ass. What's going on for you guys? What are you investing in? What are you looking at? Enterprise is not an easy game to invest in, obviously, it's yeah. hard. Um, but what are you guys doing? What are you investing? What are you looking for? Well, I'm thinking I'm looking at across the categories. The most relevant for this audience is I'm really interested in looking at um, startups that can either A, make Amazon a more enterprise friendly cloud, or B, startups that will um, pose an alternative or challenge to Amazon in, in the enterprise cloud space. And you do that either by you know, focusing on enterprise requirements or focus on enterprise services like data, storage, security. Um, that manage the enterprises and just focus on doing that really, really well, better than VMware, better than Microsoft, better than Amazon, I think and build, build a really big enterprise cloud business around those technology services. Well, you're essentially betting on that transformation from you know, the way the world is to cloud, It's right? post-server world, no one's yeah. buying servers, they're totally. all trying to find a, a cloud partner. That's the direction and, we're and, headed. And are you bullish on this integrated stack offering? Obviously, DevOps has been a big success. Um, you see Facebook, you see Google, you see Amazon building their own gear. Yeah, you know, they were kind of saying we're not playing an open compute, but sure. you know, that, that aside, DevOps is a software model. Absolutely. Uh, and so the integrated stack, what's your comment on integrated stack and how that's going to evolve uh, for, quote, the mainstream of DevOps? Uh, absolutely, so you see this DevOps culture permeating first development of applications, now how you manage your infrastructure. So you look at what's happened with open compute and um, um, open source switches, which I think Open Compute Project announced a couple of days ago, you're seeing that kind of um, DevOps culture and how they manage and um, update their applications, permeate storage, compute, and now networking, that's going to be a kind of a common uh, uh, adoption curve throughout the cloud. So the way DevOps technologies are getting um, adopted from languages to frameworks to databases is the same way we're seeing storage, compute, and networking technologies get adopted in this next cloud wave. What's your take on the iPhone for the enterprise, Amazon cloud kind of metaphor, and OpenStack being more the Android? We were talking earlier. Right. Just get your thoughts there. And OpenStack obviously has a lot of legs right now, but it's very open. Um, iPhone model or Amazon is kind of closed, uh, or some say lock-in, um, right, but it's right. still, apps are not closed. Right, so the metaphor, so, the metaphor was, you know, <laughs> iPhone is to Amazon as Android is to OpenStack. And I, I think at a high level that kind of makes sense, but not really, because there's no Google behind OpenStack, like there's a Google behind Android. So I think Rackspace is, uh, was an early leader and still is a leader in the OpenStack space, but there's also Red Hat, there's a bunch of other players there. So as a result, there's no single um, 
entity kind of driving OpenStack like Google's driving Android. So that analogy kind of breaks down. And then as far as Apple um, analogy to Amazon, I, I think Amazon is a lot more open than, than the iOS ecosystem is because just the fact that there's no um, governing board to prove your apps to launch on Amazon, right? I can go stand up on an EC2 instance, right. launch my application. Can use it. I don't need to wait apps, for this. Right. There's not a 20 page approval <laughs> process. So, um, notionally, directionally, that's more correct than not, but it, it, the analogy breaks down when you, when you really get into it. And OpenStack, your prospects for OpenStack, what's your, what's your uh, outlook on OpenStack, real quickly? I think um, OpenStack is a holistically, I think is great. I'm more bullish on certain sub-projects than I am of the overall. I think they keep launching new projects. Some are going to be better than, than others. The core projects around compute and storage and this um, API management, I'm bullish on. Um, I'm especially bullish on what they're doing around containers like Docker and CoreOS and kind of adopting this next generation of cloud platforms. Well, we got to go. We got some fans out there who want to hear more, your take on VDI, so uh, go uh, tweet to at Jerry Chen, uh, J-E-R-R-Y-C-H-E-N. Uh, we got a break here. We'd love to have you on a little longer. We got our next guest coming on. This is theCUBE live in Las Vegas, day two of Amazon's reInvent, changing the cloud game in the enterprise, and uh, we get all the detailed coverage here on theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.